I don't think I bought too much. You think I bought too much? You don't think I bought too much. I need a few more things. Setters and preppers, it has been quite a while, and I hope you and yours have been safe and healthy. And wishing those who have not been able to avoid what's going on, I wish you well in this coming year and hope you can navigate a lot better <sighs> because we all are struggling, right? But we can help each other. So I am looking at my order I had just got, and I'm sorry, I had already opened it up because I could not help myself my order from Baker Creek. So I know quite a few people last year had an issue starting their first ever garden. Now I'm, I'm old school. I have been gardening. There we go. There we go. I have been gardening my whole entire life. <laughs> I had a grandmother who was an avid gardener, grew up on a farm here in uh, Missouri. So this is just something that I um, am just just used to doing and you know what I don't like this there we go how's that is that a little better okay using the iPhone today and um, so for me this is second nature but I'm not saying I'm not having problems every year with some of my my plants and my seedlings and my garden beds that's just just part of life and as the weather has been changing and climate change and such things have been different so last year um, early January is when I start my gardening seeds for things that are quite hardy um, and take a longer time to start. So tomatoes, broccoli, cabbages, uh, peppers, <laughs> peppers, um, those type of things I do start growing in January at the latest early February. And with the recent pandemic, um, our gardening year I say our, <laughs> our gardening year started quite a bit later. So my gardening uh, seedlings did not get started until February. I still had a productive year, but I did have to think about what I was um, starting and when I started and, and plant. So I do have a small binder that I keep. And over the years I've used different things, but I've come to just love this small um binder with notebook paper and I will do that by hand and keep track of how I want the garden layout to be, what seeds have started, and also the germination rates because over the years of, of seeds and seed trading with other fellow gardeners, I have a large amount of seeds that have either died or have been forgotten about. So last year my goal was to make sure I go through and cycle through those older seeds, especially those that don't last as long. Lettuces, kales, greens. Uh, I had some broccolis and cabbages that did not do well. So those seeds were just aging and I wanted to make sure I'm cycling through. It's so easy to buy a hoard of seeds. And a hoard of seeds, sadly, this is not a hoard of seeds for me. <laughs> I did need to go ahead and replenish a lot of the greens because last year's weather was so sporadic when I normally will um, gather seeds from plants that are, are um, bolting or well just trying to go to seed we had storms and some of them will probably be coming up on their own throughout the garden beds outside so let me go through here everyone on YouTube has been sharing what they have uh, gotten through their seed orders so I do want to share with you guys too Last year, my goal were things that could withstand the heat. Our climate has changed quite a bit since I lived to, moved to this property um, years ago. So I focused on things that could tolerate the heat, use a little less water. So I focused on smaller tomatoes. My goal was for some fresh tomatoes, but a lot of canning. Okay, so I'm not as concerned with those large beef steaks that we just love to grow. I threw, grew a few of them, but overwhelmingly I did cherries, pears, small uh, intermediate types um, that were quick to grow, could tolerate the heat, and overwhelmingly did not bust uh, or burst in the, um, 
in the heat sun because it's a lot of direct sun where I'm planting. The peppers, even with all the heat, I had a problem with peppers last year. They were not happy nowhere, no matter where I put them. So this year I'm going to go with smaller types, things that will grow a lot quicker. I will probably do the same thing again with the tomatoes. Maybe splurge on a few larger ones or medium types that might be fun. But I wanted to share a few. So I also had to start replacing a lot of the herbs. Herbs just herb seeds just do not last long. And I'm not one to keep my seeds in the freezer or the refrigerator. Um, that's just too much to for me to deal with. I just try to cycle through my seeds and seed save and try to get through my seeds every five years. Most times, no matter what seeds I have, going through about every five years, uh, three for lettuces and, and, and things that are more fragile and herbs. So last year, um, I, I, I love basils. Um, there we go. This one here is gonna be new for me. It kind of reminds me of that basil Greek uh, dwarf type. So I, I grabbed that one. I thought that would be fun to get started here. And I will actually start these herbs now. And for fun, I decided to grow these among my other small types. This is gonna be nice. I believe I grew something similar to this before through some seeds that I had gotten through a trade, but I'm not quite sure. And then there are quite a few from this Baker Creek order. Okay, we're spoiled. We love these pretty photos, and I actually keep some of these labels for my catalog um, index, but some of them came in just their generics. I guess they ran out. So I might actually take and, and clip one of the old catalogs and pull that information in. But I did make sure that I focused on a lot of greens and kales. So I'm going to show you real quick what I grabbed here. And I have quite a bit. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I focused on, I think that's everything. Nope, nope, nope. Alrighty. Okay, now my kales last year weren't doing so great on the last seeds. So after a while, I thought, okay, we're just gonna get a whole new set of fresh kale seeds. I have, which I think is gonna be the best and most fun for the grandbaby, right there. That right there just looks like it will be so much fun for children. And then they get to help pick it, clean it, and cook it. So some thousand head, I'm looking forward to growing that one, right? If you've grown that one, how tall did it get? Let me know. I've got quite a bit of bok choy, but this one here, there we go. I wish it had a photo on it, but you can look that in the catalog. And sadly today, the website is not online. They had to shut down Baker Creek again. I did get lucky when they had opened up the website a couple weeks ago. I went right in, made a nice order of what I needed. Um, and did a lot of thinning down. I could have easily, easily bought more, but I, I limited myself. But some of this uh, Suze, who Suzo, <laughs> baby bok choy will be pretty nice. I'm thinking small. I have a problem with growing them taller because of the heat in or outside the greenhouse. So I thought I would just try to go with the small. We love Mizuna, so I'm going to try this pink Mizuna. Looks like it'd be quite yummy to mix in with salads. Some of the trunk Truncuda kale I have had before something similar so I think this is probably what it was wasn't quite sure another seed tree that I did years ago cannot have enough collards so a little bit of Morris head some purple lady bok choy I wish this photo was on this one I really wanted to have that for my index cards but I'll clip that out but yeah let me know did how did you like that one? Is it a nice strong flavor? I'm quite interested, so I grabbed a pack of those. Some chimisaui, I cannot pronounce that, <laughs> greens. So that one will be interesting. And another one that did not have a photo on the label was some of this Yadfa Chinese kale. So I'm looking forward to that as well. So now if you grow cabbage, 
every year I keep bumping and not growing this one. So this year I decided if I'm just going to do a couple different types of cabbages, then I'm going to grow this one here. Cordy blue, Cordy boo, boy, boy. We're bad, we're bad. <laughs> Cabbage. But it's nice and conical and it's not so super large. And I think it will do nicely out in the garden. And I think that is all. Oh, here we go. Now, I grow Russian kale all the time, but my seed was old and the last bits did not grow. So I need to replenish that in my collection. But this one here, this one was my splurge. I'm really interested. I was trying to think of something that was um, not just all a red cabbage and not all green cabbage. I really want to try this one here. Okay. I'm not even going to attempt to say that out loud. But let me know, have you grown this one? This one's from Baker Creek. I haven't looked around to see who else has it, but I'm interested in this one. This will probably be really great on a stir fry. So, also, um, I'm tired of just regular old Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to try these red types. Okay. And, I did go ahead and jump into my peppers. And I decided that I would do whoops, some cabanels. I've been doing a lot of Mexican food cooking right now. Okay, so I've gotten really great enchilada. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube Latino Mamas, because I love watching your YouTube channels. Okay, and here lemon spice jalapeno. Now. Baker Creek had several different types of small jalapeno peppers, um, colorful one that was really cute. It was an orange one, but I decided just to go with, with one with that lemon, deciding if it's just because of the color or does it have any type of flavoring to it. And I always like some bell peppers, but I'm tired of waiting for the big bell peppers, so we're going to try these minis. Those would be cute to stuff like little, I don't know. Kind of like jalapeno poppers, but some little bell peppers. Make it with a little bunny stuffing. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole new one. Bunny stuffed bunny bell peppers. <laughs> and a buena mulata. Buena mulata pepper. I had something similar. It was another cayenne type. So this one's very interesting to me as well. So what do you think? You like those peppers? Okay, so my favorite to make tea is a basil uh, blue spice basil i love making a fresh tea out of that a friend years ago when i worked at a historic place had got me onto that one and made us a nice good summer sweet tea with that one with and she had also sweetened it with some um, um, homegrown stevia so that that right there got me hooked did go ahead and add one more eggplant to my seed seed collection I've had this one, but I don't remember it being so thin, so I'm wondering if maybe it was something else, but I'm looking forward to that. Not everyone in the family loves eggplant, but I love it. And then heavy lifter. In that catalog, this heavy lifter okra really intrigued me to see all of those okra sprouts just budding right there on one stalk all at the top. There might be a dozen of them in that photo in the catalog. So that right there made me want this one. I wanted the other one that's on the cover of the Baker Creek catalog right now. That that red. Um, I don't have the catalog in front of me to remember the name. You'll see it because it's on the front cover. They were out. Uh, my daughter could not get it as well. That was out a month before that. So eventually uh, I'll, I'll get me some of those to try. It looked like they'd be nice and smooth and maybe say, stay softer a little longer before picking. So the um, Marvel de Corte Saisons. <laughs> We're just butchering some of these names, aren't we? It's a lettuce, very pretty, and that one interested me as well. The other couple things I needed to replenish are a couple more long beans. Love those for stir fry. And it's been a long time. My mother used to love growing coxcomb. And this one had a nice mixed coral garden mix with the colors. So we're going to do that and get that going. My favorite part, whoops, my favorite part of, of raising coxcomb was actually when you let them dry 
for ornamental use. But the shaking, we would take that head and pop it into a brown paper bag, close it up, and then shake all those little seeds off. So once you get them going, you do not have to buy this again. So big thing was when I was going through this order, what was my freebie? I get so excited. It's like Christmas or well, it's January, my birthday month. So it's like a birthday present. And I wanted to know what my seeds were this time. Usually I get really excited, but this time it's okay. I, I actually do love it. I love it. It's still nice. It's that German chamomile. I actually had this in my shopping cart and then I removed it when I was weeding. Okay. I did not need $200 worth of seeds, right? <laughs> And I weeded this one back out because I still have a little fresh, actual dried chamomile that I've been using for um, my uh, teas. But they ended up popping it in for my freebie right now. Sweet. So now I can go ahead and get me some fresh chamomile and replace what I have in my tea box. So that is the order I did. There was about 24 packs of seeds, counting the freebie. And not too bad. It was, it was, it was not $100. That's good, okay? So you know what I did, right? I went local too. So we just replaced the screen door on the basement and I wanted to go <clears throat> to the seed section at Menards because they had finally started getting out the seed rows. So you had burpees and you had another one called Valley Green, okay? So I picked up a few flower types, Valley Green. The nice thing about Menards Two things, we had some Menards 11% rebates back. So after purchasing our um, large air compressor for the shop, we had about, oh goodness, it was a really chunk. I can't remember what the rebate was. It was a lot, it was enough to pay for the screen door. Let's put it that way, a metal screen door. And I still have $20 left on it. So I'm gonna go back and grab some things. But I decided that day, since we were buying things off the rebate, to go ahead and pick up some seeds that I didn't have to order through Baker Creek or any place else online. So some wildflowers, candy tuff. Okay, those are always so pretty, but I hate buying those annuals because they just, they don't last, right? But they're so pretty. Another cut flower mix. I have a couple beds I wanna put some of these in and just let it go for the bees, for the butterflies. And who cannot have some calendula, cal calendula, calendula? Who cannot resist growing some calendula? And since I am uh, doing goat milk soaps more regularly now to, for sale on my shop, I decided to go ahead and just start growing that. Husband really loves sunflowers, so I cannot help myself. I'm in love with those little teddy bears, especially when they're the dwarf ones. Okay, we have some of the Velvet Queen for that bright color. And one of our hard true ones, we love Coleus. And I did stop at the Dollar Tree um, and mix those in. Still from Menards, forget-me-nots. Old school. I guess I'm just getting sentimental lately. And while I was still at the uh, Menards, I went on and started, like I said, I needed to replenish some of the herbs. I went on and got some sage. This one, though, I'm, I'm kind of upset with Burpee. It just generically says sage, but I believe this is the hardy sage, which has a fatter um, leaf, and they're thicker, and they, they really last. I had a plant, and then the animals kind of ate it. Goats will eat your stuff. <laughs> um, I wanted to return lavender to the herb garden, so a new one type lady, and LaDonna means lady, so, yeah, got to go there lemon balm my lemon balm kind of killed over this summer i don't know why it got temperamental i've had it growing for about three years tarragon some english lavender we're gonna really spice up those those soaps later this fall and i needed a little bit more time that did not last also ate up either by the goats or the chickens so that one got slipped in dollar tree the first dollar tree i ran to I went on and just picked up a couple things. They didn't have much at all. So it was just what was left over from 2020 season. Some chives, some zinnias, which are probably my favorite for, for uh, attracting some of the insect life, and African daisies. And, of course, lemon queen, more sunflowers. Okay, so that was just last week's order in my Baker Creek order that took... Really, it did not take the 30 days that I thought it was going to take. I was thankful because 
today I need to get my seeds going. So I did stop just the day before yesterday and got out, did some errands, but I swung into the Dollar Tree in another town. I live around, um, I live where there's, well, I don't have anything around, so I got to go in 30 miles in three different directions and I'll hit a dollar store or a Dollar Tree. So I went on and grabbed some snap. <laughs> sugar snaps a few of those and apparently not a lot of people knew this batch was out so got that blue lake 274 this might be the most popular bush bean type ever and the last few years i keep growing other ones but i keep coming back to this so i'm not even gonna bother cherokee wax i do like those they're quite tender Need to replace some coriander. Basil Genovese. This did really well last year in the garden. I have an orego, orego, an oregano, and it's in the greenhouse. But I just thought, you know what? Let me just go ahead and grab this and I will start some more. And I might actually sell, um, make a little uh, vegetable plant um, stand at the end of the driveway this year. Now the sweet sage, okay, and okay, it's yes, I consider onions an herb. <laughs> I consider onions an herb. I do like these to quick grow, but you know what? If you just pick your other onions early, they'll do the same thing. We have thyme, or did I already say thyme? And it's something I had not been able to catch in quite a few years, and I had actually just finally fizzled out of my seeds, was Rainbow Swiss chard. That is my favorite. Right now, I have just plain white Swiss chard, this one right here, but I really like that mix. But I do have a white uh, Swiss chard that has done wonderfully in the greenhouse over winter with no heat. And, it, and the bugs are not eating it all, all year. So that's been a lifesaver to mix in with the little bit of lettuce that's still growing. My favorite kale is the blue curled. And my seed, the last little bit I had to get me through last year, all died. I was going to actually let it seed up uh, or head up and, and collect the seeds. And I couldn't get one out there to pop up for nothing. So I guess I zapped my seeds at some point. So there's the kales. Add into more greens. We have spinach, giant noble, and good old fashioned Bloomsdale long. So right now, every Dollar Tree store should be having their their vegetable stands out. Sadly, not every Dollar Tree has a good variety that comes in those stands um, for these vegetable seeds and flower seeds. So I actually just have to go to several just to get some of the things that I want where it's just a quarter a pack. And I actually, I have really good uh, results with these. I do not have a problem. I they I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They compare to this $3.50 packs, okay? And honestly, sometimes I get just as much in that as I paid. So some of the things that I would have considered buying from Baker Creek, I actually bought from the Dollar Tree for a quarter. And the things that I did not get from either, I will go ahead back to Menards and get it off the Burpee or the um, Valley Green. And again, I'm gonna put that back up here. The Valley Green is normally 59 cents. Menards put these on their everyday discount for 39 cents. You cannot beat that. And how much seed is in here? For this one, for these flowers, it's about, oh, it might be just about a half teaspoon or so. Okay, I can feel it right there. And burpees, now you know burpees can be expensive. Those will be discounted as well. This pack here was $2.79. I think I got it, um, I forget what their percentage off is. It might be like 30% off, but either way, I it's worth it because I'm not getting that discount anyplace else and you're paying full price for a burpee. On top of that discount for their daily price at Menards, I had my 11% rebate. And so basically this was free, <laughs> you know, so it's okay. It's okay to get your seeds in a place that might not necessarily be an online seed store. 
but I still like supporting them. I still will support Baker Creek and a few other ones that are all online. The reason I stayed with Baker Creek this year for the moment, they had what mostly of what I needed. I didn't need a lot, um, but I do like variety. Oh, let me get those out of the way. And I love their seed packets. What I started to do is I've taken their seed packets and I have, um, Okay, I will I will say the one complaint I have about Baker Creek seed packets, they don't always put the information of growing season on here. That's disappointing. Come on, Baker Creek, step it up a little bit, just a little bit. Can I have how many days this is? How many days of germination? How many days to harvest or to blooming? Let me let, get, give a girl give a girl a hand. <laughs> but I have other catalogs that are wonderful and other uh, growing books that are also wonderful that can help me decide that. I will say, um, and that'll be in this next video, what I do with my seeds packets, I do not like using this in the garden, this packet, or in the greenhouse. I will remove these, these seeds from this packet. And I had purchased, oh gosh, I don't even remember, I think it was Amazon, uh, different sizes of these little Ziploc baggies. I used them at first to trade seeds with other gardeners, but I found these are great for taking this, putting it in here, and then I have a cute little way of keeping this labeled, but also be able to retain this for my um, my catalog collection and for my um, resources. I used to put these in a binder. That's just big and clunky. What I decided is to treat them like a recipe card. So I have this metal box. They're going in here. But overwhelmingly, what I end up doing is, let me grab one. I have an example here. Ah, here we go. I have some strawberry popcorn from Baker Creek. And I will cut off the top of the label. And sometimes I can have the date that's already pre-printed on that as well. If not, I will just write it on there or write on the inside. But that way... I can simplify this and then all of my seeds are either kept in a container like this for I can take outside to the greenhouse or the garden and do my planting something else I got off of Amazon this one here I bought in a, a few years ago but I've had a gray one that I bought years ago from LTD if you remember LTD use it for when my daughter was younger she is now 30 gonna be 31 so I've had it for 20 something years and where is it? Oh, here we go. Okay, I've had this for about 30 years. It has been hair for, for little girls' hair um, accessories. It has been in craft container. It has been, you name it, we've used it. And then I've recycled it now to uh, the, the seed collection. And then I bought one more. So I actually have one of these for spring and one of these for uh, late summer and fall seeds. So that way I will split them up. And that helps me figure out what I'm going to do. So we will talk about it another time. But I, I just wanted to go through some of my stuff because it's so cool and it's fun. It's like Christmas and we can't help ourselves. Um, I don't think I bought too much. I don't think I bought too much. You think I bought too much? You don't think I bought too much. I need a few more things though. And then this will get weeded into my uh the rest of my collection which are you uh, oh i will show you if you go to um uh, any craft store and if you get lucky and you go to michael's if you have one near you they will discount these at certain times of the season for two dollars a box or less so i've got these in different um uh, variations and colors and stuff but this one was so cute it was so cute so this one here is for my uh, squashes and melons and grains. <laughs> okay, and I have something different for flowers and something different for beans and tomatoes and peppers. So these are going to get transferred into those little baggies. And, and then I will sort and decide what's going to be used for this season for spring and get those started. So this was kind of long, I think. <laughs> But thank you so much for hanging around. I'm going to go back to YouTube and look and see what else you just got back in your, um, your seed orders. 
And if you're still waiting on your seed orders, uh, cross your fingers it gets there in time for you to get your planting season done. Now, I can start things early because I have a greenhouse, but if you don't have a greenhouse, you can make a, a cold frame or just wait a little longer to get your seeds going, but it's okay. We're, we're going to have a good season this year. We're going to have a good season this year. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.